Assalamualaikum and very good morning to my lecturer. For my case study topic is on faltering group. So we move to the next. So here is the table of content of my case study. So for the introduction, uh, this patient name is CNN. She is two years and three months old, and she is a female and her race is Chinese. For her family background, her father worked as an engineer, her mother is an accountant, and both of her family, both of her parents are healthy and they came from the non consanguineous marriage. This patient currently staying with her parents and grandparents and she is the second child in her family and she was taken care by her grandmother at home. So, for the chapter 2, medical diagnosis history, uh, yeah, for the medical history, she was diagnosed with the faltering growth, which is defined as a common term that has been used to describe lack of adequate weight gain in a pediatric age patient. For her medical history, this patient was born at 40 weeks with weight 2.2 kg. As you can see from her growth chart by the CDC, um, her weight was below than 5 percentile. And as you can see here, yeah, due when she was born at 40 weeks, her weight is below than 5 percentile. And as you can see for her current weight and length, her weight and length also show that she is underweight. For the history evaluation, inadequate calorie intake can be determined by the diet history. And excessive juice consumption and parental avoidance of the high calorie food often leads to faltering growth. And we should evaluate for the picky eater or food refusal. So for the chapter 3, diet diagnosis relation, uh, the etiology of the fat faltering group of failure to thrive, it can be two, which are organic faltering group, inorganic, but sometimes can be mixed. The organic faltering group due to biology, which is acute or chronic, but for the inorganic can be caused by the environmental uh, stimulus deprivation or both. So, the pathophysiology of faltering group is underlying on its uh, etiology. So, for this patient, I can I can say that she had an inadequate calorie intake because due to uh, inappropriate nutrient intake. So, for the nutrient, nutritional assessment and intervention for the ABCD, the anthropometric uh, assessment for this patient has been mentioned earlier and when I calculate the energy intake for this patient, she consumed less than uh, recommended, which is 641 kilocal per day. For the biochemical data, there is no mention there. And the child development showed that this patient is active child running around the house. She able to speak with the common words. And if you can see here for the food and nutrition history, during her breakfast, she consumed mixed porridge uh, with the fresh milk. Lunch also porridge with the black currant flavor drink. Yeah, and the dinner also porridge with the black currant flavored milk. So, the nutritional diagnosis for this patient inadequate calorie intake related to the less consumption of nutritious food, as evident by her length for age and weight for age, which is less than 5 percentile from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention CDC chart. So, for the nutrition intervention, we want 
we recommend the patient to consume 975 kcal per day. So, the principle of management can be instruct to the parent to provide the calorie dense food, which is the carbohydrate can be in the range 45 to 65 percent, fat 30 to 40 percent, and for the protein 5 to 20 percent. And we also uh, want the patient to take enough uh, nut intake of nutritionally complete and balanced formula which we pro suggest the parent to feed her with pediatrician and we also suggest the parent to avoid excessive juice of milk consumption because due to this excessive consumption can interfere with the proper nutrition of this patient. So for the second objective, uh, we will consult the parents on how to handle with the picky eater children. So we will set the meal and snack times, establish the regular time for the meal and snacking. We also involve the children, the child, the patient in the meal preparation to make her active. Uh, we also recommend a variety of healthy eating so the patient will learn uh, uh, to not to expect to get the same meal served to them every day so I calculate the energy and protein requirement for this patient so the energy I recommend 975 kcal and also protein 13 gram per day. So the micro macronutrient requirement, I suggest her to consume 50 percent of the carbo, 58 percent of fat, and also 12 percent of protein. So here the food distribution table that the patients have to follow. The ischemia cereal and starch food uh, with the three exchange simple sugar to exchange fruit with one exchange uh, fish and meat half of them we provide to the parents and also the fat is seven percent i mean seven exchange so here the menu planning for the weekday of these patients we we suggest to consume pediatrician yeah, cup oatmeal, banana during breakfast, lunch to consume sandwich peanut butter, chopped grapes, which follow the suku suku separo until dinner. And here the menu planning for the weekend. And here the menu planning for the weekend during the weekend. So. Uh, what we will monitor and evaluate, we want to make sure the calorie intake of this patient increase gradually and we want to make sure the weight and length of this patient meet for the catch-up group. And we want the parent to receive the input regarding on how to deal with picky eater child. So for the discussion, the goal is to ensure an end and eat, sorry, is to ensure an adequate intake, dietary intake, and to observe the child behavior and the family child interaction. So, we know that excessive fruit consumption intake is an important contributor to the poor growth because it provides low carbs intake and diminishes the appetite for the nutritious meal. With the repeated exposure, Familiar food become acceptable, so we recommend that families emphasize the nutritious food. To deal with the picky eater children, we suggest the parents to set the meal and snacking time. And we will also suggest the parents to involve with the kids in the, during the meal preparation and yeah, for sure with the healthy eating. So parents should encourage but not to force their children to eat. Starting with a small amount of food and offering more is preferable to beginning with the large quantities. So for the conclusion, 
with the close follow-up should be performed in the clinic, including evaluation of height and weight. So, multidisciplinary intervention should be considered to improve the weight gain, parent-child interaction, and also the cognitive development. So, that's all 